Hello again, this is Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and we are streaming every day stories about the new economy, entrepreneurs and leaders who are dealing with it, and how they are hopefully successfully dealing with it, and uh, the new rules, all about new rules about success. And uh, I know that's a topic our next guest wants to talk about, and uh, that's Joe Feehan, partner Blum Shapiro. Uh, welcome, and we're gonna talk about new rules in the PPP, correct? We are. Great. Well, you know, you're one of the few the last few months. You've got a jacket on. I don't know if I should congratulate you or rip it off, but I don't have a choice of either. But uh, look at you with the jacket. Uh, hey. That, that's some of the old rules. Those are the old rules, but, uh, you know, I, w wanted to, I wanted to roll out the carpet for you guys. Well, you see, I'm, uh, I'm all into new rules. Here you are. I like the new rules. I'll remember that for, for the next time you guys have me, if you have me back. I don't think I could get much more casual than this unless I wore pajamas, but I don't wear pajamas. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Joe, before we start, why don't you just talk to us a little bit about yourself? What's your background? Sure. I'm, uh, I'm Joe Fee, and I'm a tax partner with uh, Bloom Shapiro. Uh, I'm based in our Boston office. I head up uh, for Massachusetts, our state and local tax practice. I also help out with uh, some transactional tax planning around mergers and acquisitions. And I'm um, one of what Bloom has six or seven people here at the firm of what we call navigators to kind of help our clients and potential clients through all these new rules that are coming out around uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, uh, the CARES Act, uh, everything like that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So we wanted to have, you know, a couple partners dedicated to putting the clients together with the right resources. So I wear that hat as well. Oh, that's good. Uh, so uh, what, 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 what are the, some of the new rules? Because, you know, right now, I think all the old rules are up for debate or they're gone out the door. So everybody's got to learn the new rules. Yeah, so the new rules, well, we've had, a, we had the PPP program and people were applying for loans. And I think, you know, as you've seen, people were getting loans. They weren't sure if they were going to be able to qualify for the loan to be forgiven. So the PPP is set up as a forgivable loan. Now you have to, um, to you have to make clear that you're uh, that there's economic uncertainty for you to apply for the loan. So one of the earlier rule changes was they they created a safe harbor and they said, hey, if your loan is less than two million dollars, we're gonna we're gonna assume you meet the threshold for economic uncertainty. So you have to have that for the loan to be forgiven. So they set up a threshold. So if your loan's below two million move on to whether you meet the rules for the loan to be forgiven. If you're over that amount, even if, you're, even if you meet the loan, the requirements for the loan to be forgiven, you still have to pass this economic uncertainty test. And they're gonna look at things like maybe access to capital, cash on hand, other things like that. You've probably seen in the last day or two, uh, it's coming out, people who have gotten these loans, right? And we won't get into who they are, you can Google it, but there's a lot of, you know, there might be a lot of like, oh, why did they get a loan, right? So there is this economic uncertainty test, but again, there's that threshold. So that's one of the things that, that we started out. And then I can get into what some of the new rules are with some legislation that passed back in June. Well, let's get into it. If you like. Here's more specifics. Yeah, more specifics. So basically, um, there was a lot of uh, confusion around who would get forgiveness and whether certain industries would qualify, whether this very narrow eight week period was appropriate. So Congress passed the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act back in June, and the idea was to clarify the, uh, the rules, make some technical corrections, and really make the program more flexible so more businesses would qualify for, forgive, for the loans to be forgiven. So one of the things they did, the first thing they did was they took this covered period, which was an eight-week period in the original legislation, where you had to use this eight-week period from the date of the loan to do your payroll, pay rent, and all of that. Now, 75% of the costs had to be payroll. 25% could be, could be other stuff, rent, utilities, et cetera. A lot of businesses were having a problem with this because they weren't able to bring their employees back fast enough because you were still like, there was no indoor dining. Uh, businesses, certain businesses couldn't reopen. So the fix was we changed the, Congress changed the cover period from eight weeks to 24 weeks. So you can use that 24 week period to get your loan forgiveness. So that's a great uh, change for a lot of taxpayers. And we can pause right there because you, you can still get in under the eight-week rule if, if you had an earlier loan. You pick what's best for you. So again, I think that's a helpful, uh, a helpful change for taxpayers who, who got PPP loans. Uh, yeah, it makes it a lot easier. And I think a lot of employers were nervous before these changes. Is that correct? They were. 
a lot of employees, a, a lot of uh, employers were nervous because they were like, well, I'm not going to be able to bring my employees back by this date, you know, um, or th the thought was some of the employees weren't, didn't want to come back. Um, they, they were worried about the health or, 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 or whatnot. So that those are all real concerns. Um, so this alleviates some of that. We have a 24 week period. The other thing the legislation did was it reduced the amount you had to spend on payroll from 75% of the loan to 60%. So less has to be spent on payroll, more can be spent on rent. And that alleviates some of the other concerns that, hey, even if we were to bring back a lot of employees, we still wouldn't get the amount of forgiveness available. Um, so again, 75% goes to 60%. And then the other thing they did was there was this June 30th date. Where if you had all your employees back by June 30th, um, you could get a bigger part of the loan forgiven. And that June 30th date has been changed to December 31st. So again, more opportunities to get your headcount back up and maximize the amount of loan that can be forgiven. That's interesting. Uh, well, you know, I know a lot of people were nervous before and they're feeling a sort of breath that they can sort of run their business. The other part was that they were yep. worried about the tracking of the whole thing. Isn't that correct? They were, yeah. It's, um, you know, again, uh, with, with tracking the loan that we had some additions to the legislation, we've had a loan forgiveness application program. So a lot of questions we got was, well, we're going to bring back employees part-time. So the loan application kind of clarifies uh, how to track, you know, who you're bringing back. And they give us some uh, uh, full-time employee equivalents or FTEs. So the thought was, well, under some other labor law guidance, there was going to be, um, everyone thought, hey, maybe 30 hours is a full-time employee, but the loan forgiveness application said, no, it's 40 hours, but they give you an opportunity to count partials, right? So 30, a 30 hours would count as 0.8 of an employee, 23 hours would be 0.6 and so on down. Or there's a safe harbor where you could treat each employee as 0.5, right? So a 30 hour employee and a 10 hour employee would each be treated as 0.5 and that gets you to a full-time equivalent under the safe harbor. So there is some flexibility there in the application that you can that you can have to kind of say, hey, who are we bringing back? Because again, your loan forgiveness is based on being able to rehire your employees and bring back your workforce. I think the uh, concern now is that employers are seeing that their businesses are permanently changed yep. and, and that they're, they're, the criteria for success is changed and then job descriptions have changed. And they're worried that some of their people that they, they do need to bring back people, but not all their people are relevant anymore. Yep. And they meet, sometimes they need different people. And does this create a problem with these loans? If somebody's not the right person, can they let someone go and bring somebody else in? Or can they yeah. restructure? There is, a, there is some flexibility um, uh, given in the guidance around not being able to rehire employees or not being able to find comparable new employees. But for example, if you had somebody who had skill set A that's no longer relevant and you hire somebody who has skill set B, which is now needed, you get to count that person as a full-time headcount. So if you're kind of, the needs of the business are shifting and you're hiring different people, you can still apply that towards your headcount. But you have to replace one for replace one because, because sometimes job descriptions have been, have been enlarged now too. Yes. Yeah, well, I guess that, that's probably something that the legislation and the guidance really doesn't, doesn't grab, right? If um, one person is now doing the work of three, uh, you know, it's still a headcount uh, that you look at. Um, and hey, if they, they don't let you count somebody working 60 hours as one and a half employees, it's still a full-time employee. So unfortunately, a situation like that, like you've laid out, is not addressed. Well, and I think that's a potential problem because that's what I'm hearing from people. Can we let someone go? And can we give somebody else more responsibilities? And you know, they go, oh, does that mean we can't use our PPP loan? It's, you know, nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. Yeah, there's, you're raising an area where there is still some uncertainty and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to kind of think about what, what that would all mean when, when drafting the application. And so we've been speaking with Joe Feehan, partner at Bloom Shapiro. Joe, if somebody were looking for you and some guidance on these, in these changing times, the new rules, how would they find you? Well, they would find, uh, they would find me at uh, bloomshapiro.com. Once you log on to our uh, site, we have a free loan forgiveness toolkit that you can download. It's an Excel-based tool. Uh, you can plug the numbers in and then um, you can talk to me or you can talk to any of any other number of partners at Bloom who are, who are focusing on this area. Uh, we can review the calculations. We can help you walk through it. So again, you find me there at bloomshapiro.com. And again, a lot of great content and, and, and uh, the free toolkit you can download. Great. 
I want to thank you for being on Radio Entrepreneurs. We're going to continue to stream more stories. Stay, t stay in touch. Great. Thanks for having me on. Really enjoyed it. Thanks. Thanks, Joe.